Hi guys, welcome to episode number 9 of the Liverpool Career Mode and we have just arrived in the January transfer window. Um, as you can see on screen we have a lot of emails. The first two obviously is that Carius and Adrian have both left the club so we will be needing another goalkeeper to fill in for those guys as our number 3 um, in terms of our rankings in for our keepers. We've got Ali and then we've got Kelleher and then we will have hopefully Jack Butland to come the end of the window. Um, confirmation obviously that Adeyemi has signed and we also have the youth squad. Now a couple of guys were suggesting that instead of um, like looking into the transfer market for um, another player to sign, I could just promote Peter Clayton. As you can see he can play a, l a number of positions and especially with some of our better players out this could be the time for him to get a few um, a few games um, for the club, um, especially in terms of that FA Cup round three fixture. So I think I might just go ahead and do that. I'm going to promote him to the senior team. Um, the rest of the guys can stay. I think this guy would, would be a potential to um, get a couple of games at some point, but um, obviously he's 15 at the moment, so I can't promote him. So the rest of the squad can, the youth squad can just stay as is. And um, yeah, obviously with those outgoings, I now need to go and sign a goalkeeper. So hopefully that will be Jack Butland. He's 28 years old. Um, he's 74 rated, so not incredibly high rated. A decent sort of backup third choice keeper level. Obviously, um, I'm hoping Kelleher has more potential than um, a player like Butland. I think that Kelleher will do. Um, Let's just go in with three million. I, I don't think they'll be too stingy. I don't think that is. Yeah, that's that's an absolutely fine offer for Butland. Um, it's a bit sad. Like I remember, like a few, like a, a while back when I was obviously a lot younger, that you know I'd signed Butland as like my number one keeper, and then now obviously we're signing him as like a third choice. But you know his career's just sort of changed that way. I'm gonna see if I can sign him on a two-year deal. I know he's 28, but he should sign that. Obviously, no release clause. Um, he wants a 10k increase. I'm absolutely happy with that. I've got so much money. Obviously, I've just lost uh, Adrian and uh, and um, Carius, so plenty of wages at the moment. So yeah, that will be good. I've got a third choice keeper now. I've promoted um, Clayton to the team, and I also have Adeyemi to use for this game against Chelsea. Let's get into it. As you can see, my team is as on screen um, compared to last episode. It's a pretty similar team. Jota, Firmino, Hendo, Fabinho, Robbo, Virgil, um, Trent and Alisson all keeping their place. Ox has come in for, I think it was Thiago. Did he play their last game? I can't remember. Did, did someone else start and then Ox? No, I think I think uh, Thiago started. And then obviously Canate's come in for Gomez, who's pretty tired. I didn't really want to play Matip because they have Lukaku and uh, Werner running in behind. And like I thought it was a good game for Canate. Um, I do have, uh, what's his name, Adeyemi on the bench. But I'm not sure. Obviously he only signed yesterday. So um, I'm not sure if he will um, be able to get any minutes off the bench. But um, if there's a chance to play him, I'd be happy to. But I don't know if we'll get that. No. It's also interesting that they are, they're playing Kepa, so obviously we're not playing our Afghan players, but they are not playing Mendy either, which is pretty good. I mean, obviously I, I can't do anything if they do play Mendy. It's just how the game works, but um, it's good that they're not playing him. It makes it more realistic for my career mode. Yes, the Ox. How do you anticipate it going this time, Stuart? Well, they were probably just about the better team in that one. Tacky. Tacky with a bit of space. Cut back. Firmino. Oh. Get up. I don't know why, but they've absolutely fired it at Firmino, and he's got a chance here. Oh, what a goal from Bobby. He's had to step up since the other boys have left, and the only remaining member of our thrum, front three, Firmino. Shows us his name. What a finish this is. It's a really poor touch, first of all. But then Fab wins it back. And blimey, what a finish. That is such a good goal. 10 goals in 18 games. Fantastic record. 
Need to get back with Trent. Been absolutely done by Timo Werner. Somehow Canate blocks it with his back, but it wouldn't let me lock on to Hendo. Virgil makes a challenge. No, they've gone past Virgil and they have scored. Romelu Lukaku with his right foot. We'll be careful. Just does a back heel into the a back flip, sorry, to the stands. Oh, that's like such a great finish. You can't give a player of that quality that, that much space. Back into the ox. Firmino across the centre back. Out to Jota, back into the ox. Turn and shoot. Oh, what a miss from the ox. I brought him in for a bit more legs in midfield, but he's probably got to put that at the right side of the post. Would have been so good having a lead going into half time, but oh well. One minute of stoppage time. Let's try not to concede before this minute. Oh no, it's a foot race between Werner and Trent. Trent's got back, but then Werner's gone again. Oh, what a save from Allison. Clear that. Robbo's cleared it. For some reason, they haven't played the corner. Maybe it wasn't a corner. But yeah, a decent first half. XG, we're slightly ahead of them by one. Um, shot accuracy is really poor from us this game. We have been having a few too many long shots. and Obviously, Ox missing that one um, wasn't ideal. I do have Jones on the bench. I might have to bring him on or Thiago maybe a bit later on. Nicely. Trent's come into the middle and Fabinho's gone wide. Oh no. Werner's through on goal. Canate with some great recovery speed, but we now got to watch the next guy. What a save. I'm going to make that change. Bit more control, hopefully. Thiago on. They're bringing Mount on for Saul. The ball. Taki Minamino down the wing. Shot at the back post. Can't quite get there. Thiago's got time though. Into Trent. Might hit that. Oh my god. Trent Alexander-Arnold from 30 yards-ish. That's an unbelievable goal from him. Stepped up when it seriously matters. Huge game versus Chelsea. What change would they like me to make? They'd like me to take off Hendo for Jones. I think I'm going to make that change. Bit more height. Fresh legs. What a finish this is though. Trent definitely has that potential in his locker. What a finish. Maybe play an extra midfielder and take off like Minamino or someone. Jones comes on. He's just brilliant with that height. Lukaku's chasing back Minamino. I'm happy for Lukaku to be in his own half rather than in my box. Jota's in on the wing. Gets in front of his man. First time. Oh, what a finish. That touch and first time shot after we put it in front of him. So nice. Shotter has been brilliant in every position I've used him in this season. What a pass from Firmino. Terrible angle, but Kepa just can't keep it out. What a finish. It's actually Firmino that's the most tired player, so I think I am going to keep the team as is. Hit the same formation. I'm just going to bring on Origi. Um, that two goal cushion that we've got now hopefully Origi can hold the ball up a bit more when the time comes to make that change brilliant from Konate we see Minamino in just going to carry with Minamino cross goal oh what a save from Kepa maybe he should have done better for the second and third goal but he's kept his side in it there with that save see if we can get anything off the corner Van Dijk the target oh Thiago nearly had something go back out to Robbo swing one in Divock Origi <laughs> yes that's what I brought him on for just a bit of height just to hold the ball up but he's managed to go and get a goal the absolute clincher they cannot get into the game now that is game over We've won away at Chelsea without Mane, Salah or Keita. 
It's a great ball in. Out jumps Rudiger. Past Kepa before he can react. What a game. Well done from Canate. He's had a really good game. Knocking the ball around so nicely here. Now got it with Jota. See Minamino at the back post, but I'll probably go to Curtis Jones at the back. Oh, had a chance. Don't know why so many of our players are getting forward, but I guess the game is over now, so even if they score on the counter, it doesn't really matter, which they could easily do, as they have plenty of numbers, but they've gone straight into Van Dijk, and he's going to pump it long. That should be the game. What a win. 4-1 win away at Chelsea without arguably our two best players. Such a good win. So we're going in to try and secure the signing of Ricardo Pepe. Um, a decent upcoming talent. I think we should be able to acquire him for about 2.5 million. I don't know. Yeah, that's, they're happy with that. Maybe overpaying slightly, but he is supposedly a really good young talent. And um, I think I might just delegate this to the assistant. Actually, no, I'll, I'll just do it myself. Um, I'll come back once it's all done. Right, so we've managed to secure him on pretty much everything we wanted. A prospect, five years, 3.9k a week and a signing bonus of 33k. Definitely one for the future and I'm happy to sign him on those, those terms. So Colin have come in with an offer for Divock Origi with a player plus cash deal. Um, El Elias Shikiri. Uh, he's a 77 rated DM and 5 million. Um, I'm just not interested, especially at the moment when Origi is literally one of our best attackers um, with our other players off um, at AFCON. So yeah, that's a definite no for me. We're now going in to this game against Newcastle um, in the FA Cup. I'm going to make um, a slightly rotated team, um, give some youngsters a chance, maybe some new signings. Um, yeah, and I'll let you know the team when we get into it. So here we are in the game versus Newcastle. It is Adeyemi's debut for the club. He comes in and he joins Origi up top. We've had a slight change around. We're playing a 4-1-2-1-2 narrow. Origi and Adeyemi up top. Elliot at Cam. Jones with Ox as box-to-box. Milner at the base. And then we've got Costa Simicas on one wing offering width. And Neko Williams on the other side with I think it's Canate and Nat Phillips and then obviously Callagher in goal we've got some of our other younger players on the bench like Pepe who we've just signed, Clayton um, Butland's on the bench as well as obviously our third choice keeper so yeah quite a strong second team Oh, yeah pretty strong second team I can't believe we just hit the bar there with Elliot that would have been such a nice start to the game a wider formation or not oh no Abaddon's through what a save Keller so good into Harvey Elliott Jones now into Divock Neko Neko goes again back stick Adeyemi oh ball's just too deep for him Origi can try and lead the counter press oh they've played out of that so well out of all people they've got Sir Maximan leading the break that's offside surely it's a great save wasn't offside wow he had to make that save See if we can get Adeyemi through. Took a deflection, but Adeyemi versus Paul Dummett. It's only one winner there. The cutback, oh, it's just not good enough again. So it does so well to get in the position, but it's like the chance at the start of the game, just not good enough. Oh, Nat Phillips. Nat Phillips versus uh, Sir Maximan is not a battle I want to see a lot of this day. This game even. 
That's better from Neko Williams. Canato wins the header and now we've got the ball with Jones running forwards. Back into Adeyemi. First time. Oh, he's hit that so off balance with his weaker right foot. Oh no, and they spun Costa Simicas. Canato should pick up the pieces. He can. Costa Simicas sees Elliot. No! Elliot's probably got to score that. Neko Williams is tired. I am going to bring on Joe Gomez at right back. I know it's not his best position, but we need someone there because he's just so tired. Well up from Canate into Adeyemi. Just used the Divock run as a decoy. Back post. Hit it. Oh, he's just got no right foot at the moment. Costas with the ball. Into Divock. Yes, Divock. <laughs> Finally. After all those chances, Divock Origi steps up. And I think, on that note, I will take him off just to keep, keep him fresh for the next game in the Premier League. They also want me to take off Ox. I don't know. I'll do the changes after this replay. We need to have a little think about who we need for the weekend. So I've decided to bring on Hendo for Chamberlain and I've brought on Peter Clayton, the Youth Academy player, for Divock Origi. So... Let's see if we can hold out the remaining 15 minutes. Might be able to prompt Newcastle to attack a bit more and see if we can have a go on the counter-attack ourselves with uh, Adiemi's pace and obviously um, Peter Clayton. Fresh legs on his debut. Got to defend this first. Joe Willock. Well done from Nat Phillips. First touch for Peter Clayton. He's very big. I think, I think he did say it was 6-2 or 6-3 or something. Looks very big in game. That's a nice pass, though. Simicast. Oh, good defending. All the way out to Jones. See if Simicast will go round him. He will eventually, with a bit of prompting. Back post to Adeyemi. Hendo should take it to touch here. Joe Gomez across the front. Elliot with the goal. Seals the game. Let's go. They were queuing up at the back post. Went to Elliot. Could have gone to Clayton. Could have gone to Adeyemi. But yeah, the composure there from Hendo just to take a touch. Could have headed it back first time. Takes a touch. Goes out to Gomez and then could have gone to any of those three really. But goes to the man. Harvey Elliot. Great finish. Ref, just run into my player. No, no. Get him away. We can have a chance. They've scored. Should be a tight couple of minutes. Who is that? Fabian Cher. Must be playing up front in some weird way, like they've just gone all out attack and he's just gone up front. See if we can just hold the ball for the last couple of minutes just to avoid any pressure. Oh my god, Milner! Wow. Hendo, that's so nice. See if we can get Adiyame through. Can't quite, but please blow up. Oh, we maybe I could have scored there, but we'll take it. 2-1 win away at Newcastle. Not our best game, but obviously gave a few debuts out to some new players. Had a lot of chances, and yeah, we go through into the fourth round of the FA Cup, which is the end of the day. That's what we're aiming to do. So let's get into the next game. We have yet another monthly scouting update. Um... I haven't had a look yet. This guy seems okay. This guy's not very good. I mean, this guy's not very good either. I mean, I don't even know if the first guy was that good. This guy looks like he could be okay. Not a great value. Uh, neither with this guy. Not the best batch again. Um, obviously, we do have a very good scout, but he's not, he's not finding us that great talents at the moment. 
So yeah, let's head into the next game against Brentford. Our second last game, I believe, without our AFCON players, apart from this FA Cup game. Um, yeah, so it'll be these two games to finish off the episode. And then I'll start next episode with the FA Cup game. And obviously, once we get into February, we'll have the return of Salah, Mane and Keita. But let's get into the Brentford game. Hi guys, so here we are in the Brentford game. I will be put and the game and the game and the next one because I lost the audio, unfortunately. We're going with a normal team, basically. Allison, Trent, Matip, Van Dijk, Robbo, Fab, Hendo and Thiago in the field with Elliot, Bobby and Jota up top. And they are everyone that's available at the moment. We get the ball here with Bobby and he takes a strike and then he just gets absolutely clattered by their centre-back. And... As first feared, when we pass the ball back to, into him here, it will confirm that he is injured. Thankfully, it's just a knock and he doesn't have to come off straight away. And I just thought at the time, I'm just going to give him you know, as much time on the pitch as possible because um, we have no one else really to bring on. So thankfully, he was able to run the injury off, as you can see there, as he plays. And then Jota cuts it back to him. And then Hendo has a really good chance, but it's a really good save. Point blank, basically. And then we try to sort of make a new opportunity here, but it doesn't quite work until Fabinho finds this brilliant pass. But Thiago does pretty much exactly the same as Hendo, just a really poor finish. And then at the other end, Brentford with Tony and Norgard played really nice chip over the top. And Joel Matip, of all people, manages to get back onto the line. And it's a really, really good clearance from him. So, um, yeah, very thankful for that. Um, it's really good. And we still like knocking the ball around pretty nicely. Robbo now. He's going to carry the ball. All the way to their, all the way to their, all the way to their line. And then cuts it back to Thiago. And it's another poor miss from Thiago. Really should do a lot better there. We try and win the ball back here with Firmino in the second half now, but he gives it straight away. Tony plays the ball through, and then it's that man again, Joel Matip, with another last-ditch tackle. Really good from him. He's been excellent today in this game. We play the ball through to Jota on the left, and he just plays a really simple pass across to Firmino. That's Firmino's 11th goal in 19 games in the league. Jota assist, that's basically what Mane does for us on a regular basis, just runs down that wing, gets in behind the fullback and just cuts it across to either Mane, uh, Mane cuts it across to either Jota or Firmino, but this time it, he's cutting it in, he's cutting it in, he's cutting it into Firmino, so it doesn't really matter the personnel, we still play the same way, which is always good. As you see there, 11 and 19 for Firmino, so definitely stepping up whilst Mane and Salah are away at AFCON which he obviously needed to. We roll the ball here out with Allison, and then we see the overlap from Robbo and we just like run and run with Thiago and Robbo just like between them. Thiago just goes and somehow the keeper doesn't save that. It's, it looks like really poor keeping. See on the, um, on the replay. But Thiago and Robbo between them basically ran the whole pitch, which is pretty decent. As you can see, there's just no pressure on Thiago. And he shoots from the edge of the box, and it's not really in the corner up here, up here, up here. And as you can see, it doesn't really go into the corner. Goalie should be doing better, but I will take it. As you can see here, we're playing the ball nicely. Oxley Chamberlain into Divock Origi, who's come on. And then just as I play into Hendo, I think he's through. But as you can see on the replay, one of the most marginal offside calls ever. Basically, it's like VAR putting the lines out and Hendo's just offside, it says. Which is a bit annoying as he would have been clean through. In terms of Brentford, they did have chances throughout the game. Two of us on Tony here, no one manages to get him and he has a good shot there. So, it was a bit lucky for us. And uh, I think at this point we take off Jones for... Uh, we take off Hendo for Joe. Give him, give him, give him five or so minutes, and then 
they again have a corner but Jones in his first act just man manages to put a tiny bit of pressure on so they can't score that goal and then we go up the other end with the man who's just come on Curtis Jones I believe and you're thinking just put this away Elliot assist kill the game 3-0 and it's an absolutely awful finish. I can't believe he's missed this. Like, this is just, like, routine finish. But, unfortunately, it's not good enough. I think, though, we asked to get one more chance in this game. And we will. It's a good header for out there from Matip. Jones plays it through. Divock manages to play this. Possibly the pass, possibly the pass, possibly the pass of the season from Divock. And Elliot will succeed where Jones failed. It's a great finish from Elliot. He's not missing there. And we go on to secure a 3 0 win versus Brentford. That's all she wrote. Not enough time for any more action in this game. It's a really good reverse pass from Divock. I definitely think that's our assist of the season so far. Hendo's had a few really good ones, but that from Divock, like the reverse pass to find Elliot, um, who was onside, obviously, Oxley Chamberlain had gone offside. So yeah, that was a great, great goal in the 90th minute and Elliot got a good reward actually for being good all game. So after this game, we'll head on into the Crystal Palace game, which was an absolute rout, I will say. So here we are in the Crystal Palace game. I'm playing basically the same team as before, except Gomez and Oxlade-Chamberlain have come in for Matip and Thiago. Matip and Thiago obviously um, like sometimes lack a little bit of um, freshness, stamina, etc. Whatever you want to call it. Like their stamina bar wasn't the whole way. So um, yeah, Gomez and uh, Oxlade-Chamberlain came in for both of them. And here we are. We have Oxlade-Chamberlain on the ball. Tries to play a pass but manages to get it back. And then the ball sort of like just goes back into their players. But then, as always, Fabinho manages to win the ball back. We knock it about on the outside and once again pretty much a carbon copy of a very common goal that we score. Give the ball to our left winger let and 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 sweat or just like pass it across the six yard box and it's an absolutely routine finish for whoever's waiting there. Sometimes it's our midfielders that get onto there, sometimes it's the opposite winger but more often than not it's our centre forward and of course that is Bobby Firmino. So I believe the last time we played against Crystal Palace in real life, as we see that Bobby now has 12 in 20 games, the last time we played against Palace away in real life, I believe the score was 7-0. So I'm just going to leave that with you guys um, as we get into the next bit of highlights. Getting a little bit skilled by Edouard there, and he plays Zaha in. And I don't know, obviously I must have clicked circle to like try and do a block tackle or something. But it just seemed a little the one who gives the one who gives the one who gives it away. He does kind of lunge in, but the guy's already shot. It seemed harsh. So Edward steps up. Allison doing a little bit of miming in goal, and thankfully it hits the bar. And Van Dyke coolly heads it back to Allison, who gratefully grasps it in his arms. We then had another chance up the other end off a corner, and Jota just over the top of the bar. It's a really good chance. Jota's very good in the air. He has two men on him and he just puts it over the bar, but that was okay. At least we were showing signs of creating chances after they just had their penalty um, missed. As you can see on screen, we're absolutely dominating possession. And of course, because of that, we're able to play balls like that in behind. And Firmino, not in behind, man in behind, man in behind, manages to get on the end of it. And as you can see, it's a great finish across, across the keeper side netting sort of like not top corner but near top corner and yeah it's a really good finish from him and that's two goals in the game moving further on Gallagher on the ball Gallagher's a guy who I think would love would be brilliant under Klopp like box to box but Van Dijk absolutely picked his pocket there you don't often see Van Dijk run with the ball but there we did and Firmino plays into Hendo and we, this is like the the clip of not something we don't see a lot. Van Dijk dribbling and Fabinho scoring. And that is exactly that. Fabinho goes and the front of the front of the front of the 
uh, Palace fans. But yeah, he doesn't score off and he didn't really know what to do. We tried to pass with Van Dijk over the top. It didn't quite work out. But Martin Kelly, the ex-Liverpool player, dallies on the ball and Jota passes it across and we score another one of those goals. It's our third one in this episode so far. Basically, carbon copy Jota to Firmino and that's... And that is Firmino's hat trick. Three goals, very good finishing all round, and yeah, definitely Salah, 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 and Mane have been away. But it would not end there. Jota crosses it again to that man Firmino. It gets pushed onto the post. Elliot tries a flick. It comes out to Ox. Hendo with a really good strike. It's a brilliant save by Gaeta. Two really good saves there. One. Of Firmino which he tips onto the post and then that one from Hendo that he just manages to tip wide however we did have a chance off the corner and we're getting very good at corners Van Dijk this time against the bar but after having three chances in the space of a minute basically in game you know there was there was always going to be one more chance and as you can see a little bit of head tennis but the ball is eventually brought down by Hendo who who part Trent 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 with a good ball wide and Oxley Chamberlain has so much space to run into and he scores. And as you can see it's a great goal from Ox. We're currently 5-0 up away at Crystal Palace and as I was mentioning that 7-0 earlier is really starting to look likely. Just putting goal after goal past Gaeta, there's nothing he can do about it. He's been on brilliant form in terms of his personal performance but Palace as a side are just letting us have way too many chances Palace themselves though were also getting chances so Alisson had to be on good form for us and as you can see here Ayu is doing some skills and thankfully without him without him without him we could have conceded a lot of goals this season we are not tight defensively, I guess, like, you know, obviously it's very hard to defend on ultimate. But they were to have a corner here. This corner was not very good. Crystal Palace are normally pretty good in the air, I would say, at attacking set pieces. But they're notorious for being poor at set pieces defensively, which we've exploited in this game, as we did in real life. But Elliot, whilst we were talking, runs the whole pitch, basically, from his own six-yard box, finds a ball in, it's not cleared properly. And it falls to that man, Divock, who's come off the bench again. And he gets our sixth with 13 minutes to go. Divock comes on. Basically his first or second touch, as you can see. First touch out of his feet and his second. So that was a really good substitution from us. We didn't need Bobby on the field anymore. He'd got his, his hat trick. So it was fine to play Origi. And he's involved again here. Origi into Jones, into Elliot. Elliot's playing on the left now because I brought on, I think it was Adeyemi on the right. And then Elliot, cross goal with that left foot, scores. Must have seen Fabinho's celebration and thought, I'm going to do that. And as he adds the seventh, we remember the 7 0 defeat of Crystal Palace last time we played them at Selhurst Park. Selhurst Park, a happy hunting ground for us. As you can see, Firmino collects the match ball and that is that after this we only have uh, I believe one more match before our Boas return, Boas return, Boas return, the likes of Mane, Salah and Keita will all return. In real life um, I believe all three of them are very likely to get through to the um, to the knockout phase um, so uh, that's good for them but in terms of this career mode we're going to carry on we're going to play that game against Exeter in the next game uh, in the next episode and then we'll, we will have Salah, Mane and Keita back for that Leicester game. We'll have that Burnley game and we'll have that Norwich game all in the next episode. We'll also um, have the game against Villarreal and the other one um, against Villarreal and Arsenal in the episode after that. But quickly, because it's the transfer window, we'll end off transfer deadline day in the next episode but just to have a look at some of the biggest deals not theirs, but not theirs, but not theirs, but not for a whole lot of money if we go right up to the top here we've got Koke the biggest deal to PSG Skriniar to Barcelona Kovacic has replaced Koke 
at Atletico Madrid. That's a good signing. He dominated us the other day in real life, him and Kante, and obviously Kovacic. That goal was unbelievable in real life, I'm talking. Uh, Guedes has gone to Arsenal. Gomez, Valencia are selling a lot of their players. I don't know why Chelsea would want Bernat. Uh, Fafana to Wolves. Digne to Madrid. Obviously, he's just gone to Villa in real life. Dolberg to City. It's an interesting one. Tolisso to Villarreal. Um, but yeah, they're most of the, the uh, ones. Um, we'll obviously go through deadline day. Um, but thank you. Um, but, thank, um, but thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video today. And please leave a like. Thanks. Bye.